Hello and welcome to the Stephen Mendes channel. Today in our 21st century music show we hope to answer some important questions about feedback. We're looking here at the DX27 Yamaha synthesizer and the operators the operators offer a feedback loop. Now we know that these operators are in fact sine wave oscillators and each of the algorithms has a feedback loop on one operator. So we're going to use we're going to use uh, algorithm 8 as you can see here I'm trying to get this thing to focus um, hopefully you can see it it has the feedback loop on the last operator and they're all in parallel so that operator is going to be a carrier and we can mute the other three and that way we can just concentrate on the effect of the feedback loop on the sine wave just to keep things in perspective we're also going to try and create a similar feedback loop on one of our incredible Q106 oscillators from synthesizers.com and we're going to look at these waveforms on an oscilloscope to see if there's any similarity in the patterns that can be produced. We're going to take the sine wave output from a Q106 oscillator and we're going to patch it back into first the linear and secondly the exponential uh, frequency control and apply the feedback and observe the waveforms as we increase the feedback amplitude. Okay folks, there's our nice sine wave from the DX27 operator with no feedback. Now we're going to progressively apply, apply some feedback on the DX27 and see how it distorts the waveform. The first visible thing that it does to the sine wave is to twist it slightly. Look carefully at that sine wave and you will see that the rise time on this is higher than the fall time. Notice we have the sine wave centered here and we've got less than two spaces to the bottom but over on this side we've got two and a half um, centimeters between there and there. So the, the sine has been distorted, basically the peak has been pushed that way, this slope has been made more shallow and this slope has been made steeper. So what the feedback is attempting to do is to turn the sine wave into more of a what would we say a sawtooth wave. Our sine wave is slowly being twisted into more of a sawtooth wave. Let's apply a little more feedback. Notice that the sound, if you're listening to the sound, is a little bit brighter as well. This is with a feedback level of 5 and an output level of 99 for those of you who have a DX27 and want to recreate this experiment. We have a feedback level of 5 and an output level for the operator of 99. As you can see, if it wasn't clear in the last video, this is with this feedback level of 5 now the waveform is definitely morphing into a sawtooth and listen to the brighter timber through the speaker okay folks we've now reached a feedback level of six and it is abundantly obvious that our sine wave has turned into a sawtooth wave with the associated brighter timber We've reached the maximum level of 7 on the feedback and lo and behold our parasitic oscillation as a result of the feedback as you can see has produced this very complex waveform on the oscilloscope. But I don't know if you can detect a difference in tone 
between the feedback level of 6 and 7. Because in actual fact, 7 is the highest we can go on the feedback level on the DX27 synthesizer. Okay, we've patched up the modular and now we are going to look at the sine wave before we add any feedback. Okay, there's the sine wave from the Q106 oscillator at the same 440 cycles as we had it from the DX27. So now we're going to apply some feedback and see what happens to the waveform. We take the sine wave output, feed it into a multiple here, we feed one of them over to the amplifier, one of them back into the linear frequency input, and the yellow cable goes to the oscilloscope. So now we are going to turn up the linear frequency level and see what this does to the sound before we look at the waveform. First off, we see that the effect is completely different from the feedback we were getting with the other one. Instead of a change of wave shape, we're getting a change of frequency. But there is actually a change of wave shape as well. We're going to look on the uh, oscilloscope now as we do it. For the next experiment, we have plugged the feedback line here into the 1 volt per octave adjustable input. So we're going to feed it back now. Listen carefully as I turn the level. Two things you notice there. Two things you notice there. Uh, first of all, the frequency also changes as it did in the first case of the feedback, but only more drastically. And secondly, as it moves uh, more aggressively into the lower frequency range, it becomes buzzier. And uh, a buzzier sound automatically means that we have got it more pulsy like instead of sinish. So let us observe on the oscilloscope because if our conclusions are correct, it should be similar to what happened with the linear input, only a more aggressive change. It's become a narrow pulse, as you can see, which is repeated. If we change the... There is what it looks like now, but at a lower frequency. Narrow pulse, which would explain the buzziness of it. The most important lesson we've learned today is that oscillator feedback will always affect the frequency except in the case of the DX where it is being done digitally and that way the frequency remains stable even though the wave shape is changed. Well we have lots more goodies for you but we want to keep these individual videos short. 
Thanks for watching the 21st Century Music uh, program on the Stephen Mendes channel and we'll see you soon again.